Uh, it's really a joy and a privilege to be here. And also, you know, I was very encouraged uh, to see that little thing that uh, Philippa did, where we recognize that communication is so crucial, uh, especially with parents and, and, and children. Uh, I want to thank the Normans for teaming up with Family Life Ministries to be able to make this presentation, and also to the director of the foster care program, uh, Mrs. Karen Williams. We want to say a special word of thanks to them. And to you, too. you know, as I watched that, that little role play, I couldn't help but think of how often as parents we do, we fail with communication. Because communication, one of the key things about it is that we must tell our children the truth. And sometimes we don't. And uh, it reminds me of the, the, the pastor who uh, his 13 year old son came to him one evening and said to him, this young said now been in high school and was learning a lot about biology and all these various things. And so he went to his daddy who was a pastor and he says, so daddy, can you tell me something? Where did I come from? And his father decided to tell him the same stupidness he got from his father. And who might have gotten, gotten it from his, other, his grandfather. And so he said to his son, son, a stork brought you. So the fellow was very stunned by that. So he looked at his father and he said, so daddy, where did you come from? He said, son, a stork brought me. Again, he was stunned. He said, so daddy, where did grandpa come from? He said, son, a stork brought him. The fellow, disappointed with his father, left his father, went into his bedroom, got on his knees, his knees and began to pray. Dear God, please help my family. There's been no sex for three generations. <laughs> I would like to suggest to you that the the foundation of a healthy family is a healthy marriage. And why do I say that? I say that because the person who brought the concept and idea of family was the person who, who said that to us. If we look at the last two verses of Genesis chapter 2, it gives four guidelines of a healthy marriage. It says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. And that suggests to me severance. That somehow if we are going to get the family right, we need to make sure that those who are going to start it, they need to recognize that they have to move away from their family of orientation in order to start their family of procreation. And so we hear the scripture saying that the first thing that is necessary is severance. And then it moves on to say, and shall cleave to his wife, and that suggests permanence. It is suggesting, therefore, that marriage is a permanent thing. And, you know, it's interesting that when God provided Adam with Eve, he didn't say to Adam, Adam, if Eve doesn't work out, I'll give you Yvette. He didn't say that. And so it suggests a permanence. And then the passage goes on to say, and they shall become one flesh, which suggests unity. A very strange mathematical uh, equation here where one plus one doesn't equal two, but one plus one equal one. And the only time one plus one, one and one equal one is one when one is multiplied by one. And so we, if we explore that, we can see the dynamics of what that means. And then it goes on to say, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. And that suggests sexual intimacy. I would like to suggest that this guidelines of, the guidelines of sexual intimacy is mentioned last in God's foundational list. And there's a reason for it. The delights of sexual intimacy between a husband and his wife 
are enjoyed because severance, permanence, and unity are obviously in operation. When we remove the context of these, uh, these three foundational pillars, that is severance, permanence, and unity, we are going to end up with some kind of dysfunctionality. Unfortunately, most families in Jamaica are dysfunctional because they lack a healthy marriage, which is God's prescription for a healthy family. Let us look at Jamaica. Let's look at what we have in Jamaica, what we're faced with. In Jamaica, a nuclear family is defined as a mother, father, and children who might be married or might be living in a common law relationship. Many other places in the world define a nuclear family as a husband and wife with children. In Jamaica, we define a nuclear family as a mother, father, and children. And this mother and father might be married, or they might not be. They might be living in a common law relationship. The other family foundation we have in Jamaica are the single parent family, which might be matrifocal or patrifocal. Matrifocal meaning a woman raising her children single-handedly without that of the help of anyone, any other adult. Or patrifocal, a man raising his children single-handedly without the help of any other person. And then there's the extended family. And the extended family is quite often called the grandparent family. It's a family with three generations, so you have grandma, then you have her children, and then their children. And that's a very strong family form that we have had over the years in Jamaica. But then there's another form that is creating pure havoc in our country, and that is called the sibling family. And that's a family where we have no mother, father, grands, or it's a big brother or big sister raising their siblings without the help of parents. It's like children raising children, and that can become quite problematic, and it has become quite problematic in our country. And then there is the blended family, and the blended family is a family where you have a, a man who has children meeting up with a woman who also has children, and they either marry or they really stay in a common law situation. And so in that family, you have, it looks like a nuclear family, but the surnames of the children are quite different. Uh, it's a blended family. And that is one of the fastest growing family forms in our country. A family form we're likely to experience if we continue to follow North America is the LGBT family. And we as we Christians are very concerned about it, and we trust and pray that we will not follow North America. I would like to suggest to you, though, that all these family forms are open to become dysfunctional because their God-ordained foundation is faulty. Let me haste to say, however, now, this is not to say that some of the families who are not necessarily nuclear are not functional. There are many single parent families that are quite functional, that operate very well. But we just want to point out that if we are going to be true to what the Bible teaches, we need to see what was God's standard. So this is not to say that some of these families do not function well, because they do. Some do function very well. They function, however, without the ambit of the foundational healthy uh, marriage prescribed by God. 
One of the reasons why foster care has become so crucial in our country is that we have recognized that many of our children are really not being brought up in a loving, caring way. We have recognized that children also are best brought up in families. And because of the high level of dysfunctionality and the high level of abuse and the way in which children are really disregarded and taken advantage of and treated in Jamaica, many children are having to be rescued by the government. And in rescuing these children, the government placed these children in homes. And what we are really recognizing is that quite often these children, although rescued from dysfunctional and abusive and terrible situations, that because they're in institutions that are really not very the best to raise children, or were never designed to raise children, that quite often they end up becoming sometimes even worse. But quite often things don't work very well for them. And so we recognize the need for foster parenting, and we thank God that the church has decided to take this on, and we thank God that Family Life Ministries has decided to team up with with the government to make this happen, with CPFSA. Having said that, though, let me point out that the job of a foster parent is a very awesome and important job. As foster parents, our job is a calling from God. And I would like to suggest that if you are going to do a good job as a foster parent, you need to recognize that it is a calling from God, that God has chosen you to be that parent to rescue our children. So our job as a as foster parent is a calling from God. It is, a more, it is more important than our vocation, than our bank account, than our education, or even our own happiness. One of the few times in the Bible we see Jesus' anger is in his response to the wrong treatment of children. Look at these strong words of Jesus with me. Jesus says, And if anyone causes one of these little ones to sin, it would be better for him or her to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. Mark 9, 42. Wow. That's what Jesus said. My brothers and my sisters, I believe it must pain the heart of Jesus when we look, he looks at Jamaica. When so many of our children are treated the way they are, and because of how they're treated, they end up with a sinful lifestyle. I don't know if you know this, but we have done some research. And a large percentage of our children leaving government-run homes at the age of 18 end up either in prostitution or prison they end up continuing or maintaining or doing, getting involved in a life of sin. And so Jesus' words must be important to us when we recognize that. And that is what should motivate us to want to empty these government-run homes and have our children in foster homes with Christian foster parents who will make sure that they don't end up in a life of sin. My brothers and my sisters, we have a tremendous responsibility. I've had the privilege of speaking with hundreds of young people each year. What do they desire from their parents? 
What do they desire when they're living in these homes? And they will tell you they're not getting it. What do they desire from their parents? What do they desire from living in homes, government-run homes? They desire a relationship, a relationship with a parent, a relationship with their parents, a relationship with a parent. They seek their parents' time and attention. Please don't underestimate the power of being there for your children or for our children. I want you to remember something which is a psychological fact. Whoever listens to your children has power over them. And so, if it is the pimp who is listening to your children or, or children in Jamaica, if it is a drug dealer, if it is a gang leader, if it is anyone who is corrupt, who is giving the children of our country the time and attention and listening to them, that person has power over them. Can you imagine, therefore, if we have Christians who are giving themselves up for foster parenting and who are willing to not only listen to those children, but be able to provide them with Christian guide, biblical guidelines, can you therefore see what is likely to be the outcome? Because whoever listens to your children has power over them. In closing, I would like to leave just two Two key points I'd like to leave us as parents to remember. Keep two key points to remember. Uh, one, bless your children. Bless your children with your presence. Your very presence is a blessing to children. Bless your children with your presence. And two, invest your time and energy and be committed to them. Be there for your children. The result is hope and security for all. What therefore is the hope for Jamaica? The hope for Jamaica is for us to be able to give our children time and attention, to bless them with our presence, to be there for them, and not only will it be the hope for Jamaica, it will also be one that offers Jamaica security, where we can feel secure because we are producing less and less criminals and less and less of our children ending up in prison because we were able to give them time and attention. We were able to listen to them. We were able to say to them, Follow me as I follow Jesus. Follow me as I follow God. May God help us as we continue to be parents who are going to be guided by what the Word of God teaches. God bless you.